Hey CNCers, today we're going to be installing inductive sensors for your long mill. Inductive sensors or limit switches are a great add-on for the machine but are recommended for experienced users. The limit switches allow for consistent positioning on your work surface as well as having multiple workspaces. Let's get into the installation. First things first, let's decide where we want our home position to be. The typical one is in the bottom left hand corner. If your controller is on the right hand side, the installation is the same except just mirrored. And of course your homing position isn't just to the front left corner, it can be in any of the four corners. We're going to kick this off by installing the Z sensor. Depending on the setup of your machine, you can set it up in either of the left or the right side of the gantry plate and two large holes in the back. Take one of the sensors and thread a nut about three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters onto the body. Then slide on one of the lock washers. Decide what side you want to have the sensor on. Typically, it'll be on the same side as the controller and place it through that hole. Finally, install the remaining lock washer and nut. It should only be finger tight. We don't need to use tools at this stage. We'll be adjusting later on. The sensor should not be sticking out too far towards the front of the machine. We'll be making adjustments later and we want to make sure that the gantry won't crash into the sensor. Here are the parts for the X sensor. Notice that we're short a washer. It's because there's a bit of an interference fit and it won't fit against the rail. So we'll just leave it out for this installation. Same as before, you'll thread a nut and washer on the sensor before installing it into the gantry plate. If you have your controller and motor on the right side, install the sensor in the right gantry. Thread the remaining nut onto the sensor and just finger tight. We'll make adjustments shortly. If you want to have the sensors on the back right, we recommend getting the sensor harness extension cable. It's simple to install and allows for more flexibility. Just plug in the connectors and run the harness to the controller. You'll need one per sensor. Users with the 48 by 30s will receive a extension cable for their Z axis. If you want one to put your X sensor onto the opposite side, you may need to order another one. Onto the Y sensor. Here are all the parts that you'll use. To make the installation a little easier, we're going to pre-install the sensor onto the sensor bracket. As with all our other installations, nut goes on first, then a lock washer, and then we'll install it through the bracket. Orientation is important. The bracket has been cleverly designed to minimize setup. The sensor depth will be the same as the face of the bracket, just like this. Use the supplied wrench to tighten the nut. Not overly tight because you may need to make adjustments later. Take the small extrusion nut and slide it through the small opening on the front of the foot as shown. Here you can see my mistake. I put the nut upside down, flip it over and carry on with the rest of the installation. Using the small allen key, push the nut into the rail, but not too far. Get the small socket head bolt and prepare for the tricky bit. You'll want to thread the bolt onto the nut. I'm looking through the hole we placed the nut into as I found it easier to thread the bolt on. This could take a few minutes, but you'll get it. Now that that's done, let's put the bracket on. You can slide the bracket on to the nut with the sensor to the right hand side. This will allow you for maximum travel. As you can see, there's a lot of flexibility on where you want to place your homing switch. 
With the supplied Allen key, you can now tighten up the bolt. Just a quick comment as we finish up the sensor and before we move on to the next step. Don't run the wires through the drag chain for the Z and the X axis. Otherwise, if nothing's working correctly, you may have to undo all that hard work. In the next step, we're going to get everything set up and activated. Then you can run them through the drag chain. Let's plug the sensors into the controller. X sensor is first, then Y, then Z. If you have any trouble knowing which sensor is which, the Z sensor will be the shortest, most likely. And the Y sensor shouldn't be or won't be in the drag chain at all. Now jog the gantry towards the sensor, and if you're lucky, you may activate it on your very first try. Your Y inducto sensor is now ready for use. If not, we got some other tips to use. The bolt and the slot in the bracket allows you to move the sensor forwards and backwards a little bit. This should help to get you closer to activating the sensor. You may have to adjust the nuts on the sensor itself to get closer to the wheel. Loosen the nuts on the sensor as needed to slide the sensor closer to the bolt head. The sensor should be close but not touching. When the red LED on the back of the sensor is on, the sensor is triggered and you are in the right location. Make sure this LED stays lit while you tighten the nuts. With the sensor activated, you can see the small gap between the sensor and the bolt head on the Y sensor. Now onto the Z sensor. Raise the Z gantry so that it's in front of the sensor. Like the Y sensor, adjust the nuts and move the sensors towards the gantry till the red LED on the back of the sensor lights up. It's hard to see in this video clip, but the sensor was being activated. Here I am using an adjustable wrench in order to tighten these up. You don't have to over tighten the nuts, they just need to be snug. Here I am uh, jogging the gantry to confirm the sensor is activating and deactivating when I move the gantry away from it. Here's a quick clip of uh, just the distance between the sensor and the gantry plate. Now it's time to adjust the X sensor. Move the router mount towards the sensor. Leave a small gap between the router mount and the Y gantry plates. You are pro at this now. Just like before with the other two sensors. Loosen the nut and move the sensor towards the gantry plate in order to activate the sensor. Just remember not to over tighten. It just has to be snug. It doesn't have to be wrenched down. Jog the machine to make sure that everything is working the way that it's supposed to.
Before we enable the sensors in the firmware, move the machine slightly away from the sensors to deactivate them. This is a critical step, so don't forget to do it. Join us next time or check the link below to see how we enable the sensors in the firmware.